What's going on guys, my name is Daniel and welcome to my second video here on this new channel. First off, I want to thank everyone who has come over to subscribe. We're currently sitting at around 72 subscribers, so I want to thank you all for the guys who did come over and check out the new channel. We're going to be bringing Be A Pro mode here as well as Be A Star mode. We'll start with Be A Pro, continuing on with the videos where we left off. Now this is our next match against Newcastle Knights playing at Hunter Sports Stadium. I'm pretty sure the stadium's called. Could be wrong. And yeah, this is their home game, obviously. Hoping to try and get that win. This is another thriller. So hope you guys did go on to enjoy the gameplay in the background. I will give you a play-by-play -play at some point throughout this video. But I just want to get a few things out of the way first about the Be A Star mode. Now, we were running some um, voting system on that. And I'm just going to quickly pull up in the background while this gameplay is obviously still going on. I'm going to pull up the straw poll results and see what it's currently sitting at. And then find out which ones are the top voted uh, players and then make a decision with you guys down in the comment section or at least if I can find a overwhelming winner right now then I'll be able to just choose that winner and um, start my series off from that tonight so just real quickly I'll find this um, poll and then we'll be able to you know, get things sorted out for who I'm actually going to be uh, playing as the career mode for the beer star obviously so 20 seconds and I should have it um, so there's a lot of people voting actually for a few people and they like the names kept coming up. Um, Roger Tavisa Shek, I think the name's pronounced, I'm sorry if I just butchered it. Um, Semi Rod Rajal is also mentioned as well and I put a little thing up here. Josh Dugan was had a pretty fair amount of votes as well as Greg Inglis and um, uh, Michael Ennis as well was also one of the picked guys and there's a Another hooker, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to try and find it. I'll, I'll put up an annotation on the screen right now who that hooker was. Uh, or I'll just edit it in later and find out so you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. But I'm pretty sure it was a hooker from the Melbourne Storm um, that you guys were voting on to uh, see in the series. So, as I said, I'll try and get that sorted out very quickly. And then I'll probably even have the annotation up on screen tell you guys who I picked. Um, it most likely will be out of Josh Dugan, Greg Inglis, and um, Michael Ennis, or even Robbie Farris. It's just either one of those four guys, and then either that um, the Melbourne Storm player. So you'll know anyways within two or two, three hours from this video going live because the BS Star mode will begin. And hope you guys you know are keen on who I pick and who ends up getting picked for that because it should be a good series. And I'm pretty sure we start straight from the NRL. Um, I could be wrong and we start from the Holden Cup, but uh, if we start from the NRL, it'll be good because we start, you know, seeing the big names in the game and playing alongside them. Right for now, obviously, we're still in the Holden Cup stage, still trying to work towards our uh, contract for next year. Nothing's available right now for us. It's just continue on what we're doing, try to continue to get those good games and at least, you know, contend each and every match and not let teams run over the top of us and score a lot of points on us. And that's when it comes to my next uh, quick topic here is that I've started to actually read a bit more stuff about what I should be doing for my uh, creative player, like how I should upgrade him and whatnot. And I read that strategy and, and technique and footwork is really uh, like crucial when it comes down to it because being the playmaker, technique, strategy, footwork, all that stuff comes to like ball handling as well as passing and stuff, which can really help obviously put the players through the gaps which is what I'm trying to work on uh, a lot now and here we are just quickly making this chase and boom we weren't we used all our stamina on the chase and he just barreled straight over the top of us so as always a, always a reminder guys make sure to keep an eye on your stamina and make sure you've got some stamina to make those tackles and don't use your sprint too much just use it when you need to and only get involved in those games or in those tackles I should say when you need to so just a little tip there. If you guys want to see maybe a top five tips video for the um, game, I can give you my top five tips uh, for Rugby League Live Free. Either go ahead and let me know down in the comments uh, if you'd like to see that, just by obviously commenting yes, you'd like to see the tips video. And I try and give you guys some tips that I've picked up over the, you know, the week and a half that I've been playing this game. Absolutely loving it. It's so much fun. If you guys haven't picked it up yet, then I really wish like there was some way I could help you guys get it. And I think I mentioned it in the comment a few weeks ago, or last week I think it was, when we first started uploading, um, someone was saying they were going to get it soon, I said to them, I, I really wish I could, uh, like, you know, put a uh, giveaway up for you guys to win that, but unfortunately I just can't do that right now, but uh, for now we're just going to have to stick with what I've got here, and you guys will just hopefully enjoy the content until you guys get a chance to play the game yourself, and it is a really fun game, other than a few little patches that need to be done, as I mentioned, with offloads, and some certain tackles and I don't know just a few little things that need a bit of a um, fix up and once they do come this game will be you know beautiful and as we put a little you know what was that there just a big bomb down into the 
end zone and nearly actually caught it on the full one. I just caught the end zone because today I was watching the NFL game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings. So as an Eagles fan, I'm obviously been following Jared Haynes' journey over in America for the NFL. And the last few months have been pretty tense, just seeing whether or not he was going to actually make it, make the actual 53-man roster. And I think it was last week it was officially confirmed that he made the roster for this week's game. And the kickoff was today, 12.20 local here in Australia. And it was an awesome game. I, I watched it the first hour or so and then I had to duck out for a minute. Came back, caught the last quarter of the fourth quarter. So it was probably about six to seven minutes I caught in the last quarter. And it was a pretty tight game towards the end, but you could still tell that uh, the 49ers had a lot of defensive uh, power over the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I'm not a huge uh, NFL like watcher, and I did mention it, I think, before in a video that I've done on Madden, I think. I uh, mentioned that I'm not a big NFL watcher, but I have been playing Madden NFL since 2003, and I've been watching the game on and off like for, since then, and probably a bit longer than that as well, before I even played the game. But I have been watching it, and I do have a bit of knowledge of the, of the sport and stuff, and that's why I'm really enjoying uh, Haynes transition into the NFL because he's taking his rugby league skills and really putting them to the test and showcasing them in a completely different sport, a completely different setting, and he's standing out like um, like no other. Today, one of his first receptions actually put on him, you know, a, just a typical Haynes step, but it fooled the defender and sat him on his ass, and it was it was pretty funny to see. And I'm just, as I said, excited to see how Haynes' career takes off within the future at the 49ers and. I'm pretty sure he's signed to a three-year contract deal, which is um, pretty good because it's going to lock in his future for, as I said, three years. And, and obviously everyone knows that uh, NFL pays some good money. And coming from, I think he was at a $3 million contract with the Parramatta Eels at a million dollars a year or something like that. He's going down to like a quarter of that for the NFL at the 49ers. So it shows that he, he wants to do his dream regardless of the paycheck that he is given each fortnight, say, or each week, I should say. But that just shows his love and... As I said, commitment to want to follow his dream and he's doing it first hand. We all get to witness it first hand because obviously all our news coverage is, is all over it and it's good to see Australia getting behind him and also Fiji where he's originally from and uh, the Parramatta Eels also getting their support shown uh, on their Facebook page and stuff. But let's get back on the topic here. Uh, 50 minutes in, it's obviously a new old score so it's been quite a close game uh, here at home for the Newcastle Knights and we're trying to just stay competitive, stay up there with them. 29 metres game, they have fifth tackle. I'm going to go for a charge down. It bounces off the back of their play, which gives us the offside penalty handover for us, or we go for a kick for touch, and hopefully gain about 20 metres off this restart, and hopefully pull something out of our top hat and put some points on the board here and get the you know, the team's momentum going, trying to get that confidence up and see if we can you know, get behind each other and rally for that victory. And high tackle, boom, straight after the restart. So we're going to get another penalty here. Uh, uh, probably a good option would have been kick for the goal and probably get two points but we don't obviously get that choice sometimes and so we're going for the kick for touch and get an extra 10 metres so continue this ground attack and try and put those four points and convert it to six and we're going to take it up here for a little run step back on the outside push it off to our uh, five eighth and he's going to push it off to our second round try and get a few more metres he's just off the try line there you can tell if he reached out he probably could have got it there we're going to come to me Try and put a little step on, and he's got to tackle me straight off the bat there, only about a metre or so off that run. It goes off to Tepai. Tepai could have powered through, maybe if he tried a little bit harder, but we won't know what's going on the inside of him. Let's tackle three, and we're still 10 metres out here, pushing it right. Going back on the outside, that's a horrible pass. The player misread my run, and I misread his run, but we're still going to have control of the ball here. Try and do nothing stupid. We're going to keep passing out wide. Let's tackle four, 20 minutes to go in the game, which is roughly about two and a half minutes of real time here. We're going to go to a hooker, he's going to push it off to the side and just going to keep passing out through their hands here. Hopefully try to find that gap and he's wrapped us up. 10 metres gain off this attack, fifth tackle. Let's see what we can do here. Calling for it early, trying to get it out wide. We're going to put a grubber back through. He's going to get picked up and score. Tepo Morale picks up the first try of the game. Well, what a start. That was a great assist off me, uh, if I do say so myself. But you can watch it here in the replay. Tepo's running straight through, no stopping. The bounce is just perfect for him, picks it up, dives over and gets that four point and we're off to a great start. It's a bit slow I should say, it's 60 minutes in but uh, at least it's a start to the points and try and get that momentum going. And here we go, we're just going to line up for this conversion. We've had a pretty good conversion rate so far this season. Hopefully we we'll continue at this game as we line it up here. Let's see what happens. And we've got it for the 6-0 lead, so I'm pretty sure we're at about a 3-3 uh, 
uh, in our conversion attempts this season, which is, as I said, quite an effort for a rookie player here on rugby league three. I'm pretty sure, like for standards wise, I don't know how everyone else is going because there's only a few people actually uploading. It and I've been checking out their channels, and they're all doing really well. So it's awesome to see this game getting some coverage on YouTube. And I was messaging the actual rugby league live free team before the game released, and was just trying to talk to them about the game a bit more. And unfortunately, I couldn't get contact. Well, I could get in contact with them, but didn't get word back from those guys but as I was looking around a bit more I could just tell that there, was, there wasn't too much Rugby League Live content and I really thought that Rugby League 3 could be the year especially being on next gen console this could be the year to really bring Rugby League Live 3 to like the mainstream YouTube audience because like I don't think PewDiePie or, or you know someone like that's going to be playing I come from like a Call of Duty background so like T Martin, Ali A, Syndicate Project and all that I don't think those guys will be playing you know, rugby league live free anytime soon and if they did they'd pull in like obviously hundreds and thousands of views so the best thing that we can do is you know as a community is try and make you know our hundreds and hundreds of videos and just try and get them the much much exposure as we can on each of them and try and uh, as i said grow those numbers on the youtube scene and here they go make a break away off my mistake didn't have stamina to get that tackle and they're going to run away the length of the field and score you know, if they were obviously smart, they would have went for the points right under the post there to, you know, kind of 100% guarantee the six points uh, from that. But you can check out the replay here. We put the bomb up 40 metres out, and it's going to be knocked down. And it comes to a nice play, and that's when he gets the gap, puts it off to this player. I'm not sure on this guy's name. And he's going to run the 70 metres to score the try. And it's unfortunate because there was only roughly about a minute to go in the video, I'm pretty sure, or about a minute and a half, maybe two. Um, in the game to actually you know, hold the defence out. If we had held him out, we're going to line up for the conversion here. Here he goes. And he's going to nail it. So that's one for one from Brock Lamb for the day. And that's going to put us at a six or score line. So we're in the same kind of position that we were in last game. If you remember, the kind of six or uh, lockdown, I think it was. And it was down to the kind of time where we're going to start looking for a field goal. And that's pretty much in the same kind of position I'm sitting here when I was playing this game. Uh, knowing that we need to get up there and try and get that field goal attempt before they get up to our end and attempt their field goal because they're obviously going to be in the field goal mindset as well as we are. So pretty much on the defence, they're going to push it left to our side here and he could have made a gap there. We got bumped off. we just got to try and work on our stamina and strength just a bit more to guarantee that doesn't happen in future episodes, obviously. And you can see there on my stamina bar, it's right down the blue. That's like my active stamina to actually use and you want that up as much as you can for each and every tackle that you prepare and go in for because if you have like a quarter of a bar and you're going for a tackle you're going to use a lot of energy and then you pretty much your, your chance of getting palmed off or barreled over is pretty high and they're going to push it right here and then he's going to go for boom field goal he's going to nail it Dylan P Piffian Piffian nails a field goal unfortunately we don't have enough time to really get down the other end and score a try so our only chance to get down close enough and go for our own field goal and as you can tell it hits the upright and if it had gone just a little bit more to the right we would have been able to save that and you know kept it at a six or score line and there's our chance obviously we've got to kick off back to them <clears throat> excuse me for a second we have to kick off back to them give them possession they're going to waste time as much as they can and try and get our possession back and try and break away and try and get up to there and then try and at least get to about the 30 40 meters out because the field goals on this are pretty powerful I've seen one nail from about 45 metres out, but um, I haven't really had the chance because if you remember the last game, the guy kicked it out in the full and pretty much threw the game away for us. And Our stamina is really low. We shouldn't be going in for those tackles, but we're really trying to just slow down the opponents and make it sure that they don't get as much metres on us as they would on as we would on them, I should say. And he's going to kick it out on the full. It's going to waste the end of time. We're not going to get enough time to go for our full goal attempt. So unfortunately, we, we did lose that game 7-6. In the next video, I'll bring you an update on our league standings and where we are sitting over on the competition. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. Sorry if I sound a little bit different, but I, I'm doing this with a dry throat. I probably should have got a drink halfway through this, but Te Palmeiro picks up the man of the match, even though we did lose, but it was a close game. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Peace out.